since the first question, Patricia, is we were treating acute myeloid leukemia with 7 and 3 in 1977. We're still doing the same. What is the best way moving forward to change this by 2030? Well, Azra, this is a very important question because it shows, uh, uh, in fact, the failure of the current strategy. So my view is that we should change the paradigm. Um, and uh, you said it so beautifully in, in your book, uh, we really need to chase uh, the first cell because uh, uh, chasing the cancer at the beginning and uh, recognizing the first pathological blast cell in, in blood coming out, coming out from the bone marrow, um, we, we will have the possibility to test if uh, a weaker therapy, another therapeutic strategy can uh, eradicate, uh, eliminate cancer without uh, bringing too much uh, toxicity to the body. Or maybe just reinforcing the immune system uh, will be enough at a very, very early stage of cancer uh, to block it and, and prevent uh, its spread. Now, if we don't do that, if we don't make the effort uh, to develop system detecting uh, those first cells, we will never know if we can uh, stop cancer with a uh, lower toxicity, with a better strategy. So I think this is very important to, uh, to implement. Thank you. Second question. There are three and a half million papers on cancer. 140 plus thousand last year alone. But there's a staggering disconnect between great scientific insights and translation to improve therapy. What are we doing wrong? Hmm. So important question, Azra. Uh, yes, um, knowledge is important. It's very important to uh, understand how uh, disease uh, develop. So fundamental knowledge uh, is important. Translational uh, studies are also important and clinical studies are important. Uh, we generally tend to go from the fundamental knowledge to the clinic uh, application. And uh, I'm not saying that is wrong, but we could also think about the other strategy, uh, which means uh, starting from patients and uh, trying to implement another way of uh, attacking uh, cancer. What I want to say is that if we start from patients, uh, the first question is uh, why patients die, patients with cancer. So they die because uh, cancer spread in the body. And so uh, what, how can we avoid that the cancer spreads in the body, maybe uh, the, the solution is exactly uh, to find cancer cells before they develop the capability to spread. And so this will focus a lot of uh, studies, a lot of uh, uh, means and uh, you know, resources on this direction if we start from patients. And you also wrote this in, in your book, but I think it's so very true. Uh, we, we really have to put the patients at the center. It's not, uh, it's not that uh, uh, making uh, fundamental studies is wrong because knowledge is uh, always an advantage. But if we want to go rapidly uh, to find solutions, we need to start from the problem which is uh, affecting patients first. Great. Uh, question number three. The fact that children respond to the same treatment better than adults seems to suggest that the cancer biology is different, but also that the host is different. Since most cancers increase with age, even having good therapy may not matter as the host is decrepit. Solution? Uh, solution. Uh, this is uh, a very important observation. First of all, I think that the paradigm uh, to chase uh, cancer at the very beginning, the killer, the first killer cell, 
um, is very important because it is a common paradigm for all types of cancer, whether developing in children and in adults. But um, you raised a very important question because uh, you said maybe the host is decrepit, and of course we know that uh, you know all the uh, older people are they have uh, less resources. Um, to fight cancer, but also to uh, stand and to, um, to uh, support those toxic treatments. So one aspect of this is that I think we should uh, push uh, the education at two levels, um, individual level and political level, uh, to improve the quality of life, the quality of what we do, you know, uh, each individual um, avoiding toxic, uh, avoiding, uh, you know, um, eating bad stuff, uh, you know, sleeping correctly. There are uh, many, many aspects that we can improve by uh, um, large uh, mass media promoted education. But on the other side, we also need a political decision because uh, we live in a world full of mutagens, of pesticides, uh, of toxics. So this is not uh, under our control, but we can protest, we can ask that this part uh, um, is improved by political decisions at the, you know, maybe at the district level and then uh, town level, country level, uh, and maybe at the level of the planet uh, one day. Um, this is on one side. Now, on the other side, we really need uh, to check our body, uh, I would say, uh, as often as we check our bank account. Uh, and with the most sensitive, uh, um, sophisticated, uh, and non-invasive methods because we need to check the body in real time and several times, you know, per, per week or per month, as soon as possible. Um, and this is a very uh, big effort, uh, is a scientific effort, uh, um, developing methods uh, to chase weak signals, not only cell that we need to detect, but also to recognize as killer. This is uh, an important aspect. But uh, molecules, whether DNA, RNA, proteins, membranes, metabolites, weak signals, uh, which can tell us at the very early stage that something in the body is, uh, uh, you know, preparing the development of cancer. And combining these two aspects, maybe we will uh, have the task of treating cancer in, in um, elderly or uh, older people easier. Beautiful answer. Very thoughtful. Um, next question. You have great knowledge and experience in the field. If you were given limitless resources to plan a cure for cancer, what will you do? Well, I think that uh, consistently with what I just said, I really would put all the energies in trying to detect uh, the first signal. In fact, our team has worked uh, uh, for 20 years uh, to really chase the first cell, uh, which is detectable in the body through non-invasive analysis. And uh, we believe in this strategy, but, uh, and that we think is important, uh, and we developed this Isaac by other cells method. Uh, but I also see things in a broader way. Uh, cells, excellent but also signals, weak signals. And so it is a combination of strategies. The, the target is so difficult, you know, uh, fighting and defeating cancer is so difficult task that we really need to combine different approaches, the most powerful, the most uh, um, powerful and integrated approaches uh, they have to play uh, to, to really win the battle. So I would put uh, uh, endless uh, resources uh, in this direction. Super. And now the last question, which is a little bit philosophical. Offering a patient with advanced stage non-curable cancer 
palliative but toxic treatments? Is it a service or a disservice in the current therapeutic landscape? That's so, so good question. I think that we should distinguish uh, two situations. One uh, situation when the clinician uh, do not know uh, if uh, uh, applying further treatment, uh, there is a real chance uh, to improve the outcome of the patient. In this case, there is a reason to try. But uh, there are many other situations in which the clinician knows perfectly that uh, there is no hope. The outcome is already decided. There is no hope that you know, the patients will recover or will improve or whatever we can give as treatment. So in that case, I think that we really need to target one important aspect, which is good quality of death. We generally care about good quality of food, of uh, uh, drinks, or, you know, even the birth, uh, you know, but good quality of death is very important too for everyone's life. And um, I think that when we are in the case uh, in which the clinician knows that there are no chances, the better thing to do is to calm the pain and to help the patients uh, in order for the patients to have a, a very good quality or the best possible quality of that. So yes, you know, uh, to answer your question, you know, the strategies uh, uh, which um, give uh, toxic treatments, uh, you know, while uh, the outcome uh, uh, for the patients uh, is already already known and is uh, negative, it's uh, just a loss of energies uh, and uh, and a lot of pain, a lot of expenses for nothing. Well, thank you so much for that very, um, I would say, compassionate answer. And I'm very grateful that you took the time out, Patricia. We wish you the best of luck with your amazing, amazing journey into finding the rare cell. <laughs> thank you. All Adam. the best.